Hello and welcome to the first video in our Advanced Strokes series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the backhand loop or backhand topspin. We're going to be breaking it down, looking at the details, looking at the mechanics um, and how to split that, split the whole shot down into simple chunks so it's very easy for you to duplicate, to understand and then to replicate it on the table. Um, I recently did a video on the backhand drive which is in our basic stroke series playlist so um, I'll put a link to it up here. I think it'd be useful if you go and check out that video um, simply because there's quite a bit of crossover um, from that video to this one and you know if you've not nailed that down yet um, make sure you go and practice that. If you've got all of that sorted and you're happy with that shot then stick around and we'll get into the uh, full details of the backhand loop. Um, so it's time for me to ask you the question. Do you want a backhand like Simon Gauzy, Vladimir Samsonov or Dmitry Ovcharov? Yeah, so would I. But maybe, maybe you'll just settle for mine. Should we take a look? Stay tuned. Let's do this. So in this left hand image you'll see the normal foot position for the backhand drive going cross court and in the right hand image you'll see that the left foot is slightly further back still going cross court. The reason is that the stroke is now longer or needs to be longer. So I'm going to show you another two now this is for going down the line. So the left hand image here again is the normal foot position for a, say a backhand drive which is a, small, a shorter stroke and the image on the right is for a backhand topspin down the line so you can see that the left foot is slightly um, further back than it would be normally. So I wanted to introduce you to a, um, an implement uh, which will help you to visualize how you're supposed to play this, this stroke. Now, if I just demonstrate it for a moment, so what we're looking for is we're looking for this type of, of shot. Now, you can see that if I play it very slowly, we're looking for this, round, and then up. This, round, and then up. So one thing you will notice is that the, the elbow comes, this part of the, upper arm comes up first and then the, the forearm, wrist and finally the racket or bat will come through last. So here, there, here, there. So that's why and how we get power. Now I made this thing which is, this is just a ruler with a hole in the end and a piece of paracord. Now, it's this length because this is the length of my arm plus my racket. So, my top half of my arm is roughly about 30 centimetres, which is the length of this ruler. And the string stretches more or less down to the tip of my racket. And this is to illustrate just how we get power. Um, so, again, I mentioned that for the shot, it's essentially, it's essential that the top half of the arm, the upper arm, goes first. Because if it doesn't, what will happen is you'll just end up doing this. And you can see from, from this, even if I, if I hold this, uh, I can get some power, but if I let this come up, you can almost hear that. Okay, now, so what do, I, what do I need this for? How can I make this visually simple for you to understand? So, you will notice that the stick, so if I hold the string in my hand and I just use the stick, so here we go. So, it's moving, it's moving pretty fast. Obviously the tip is going to be the fastest moving part. This 
if I do this, it's not going to hurt me at all. That hurts a little bit more, but still not very much. So the stick isn't moving very much at all. Now, if I hold the other end of the stick and let the string loose, now that same motion, that same flick, the string, as you can see, is moving very fast. And if I was to hit someone with this, it would hurt a lot. You know, for example, you can imagine. Now, this is to help you to understand that the upper arm doesn't move very much, but the, the racket should be following. So if we watch this in slow motion, so as I take this back, it, the, the string comes back, and what it will do, and I'm going to use another implement here. So uh, this is my uh, painting stick. But I just want to, to show you that when I, um, if I do this, so if I pull it back, it, it rolls around the stick. Now that's what we want for our shot. So we want to be able to have the, the racket come around like an S shape. So that's what this, this is doing. So this is coming around. So if I visualize on the table, so it's coming around and it's, the string is coming back around almost. And then when it comes back, it's going to flick out. So that's the kind of motion you want from your backhand uh, loop or topspin. So we're looking for the, 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 the. So you get this idea that the upper arm not moving very much and this is coming through very naturally and very fluid. And the point I would make is that from your elbow down to your wrist and bat needs to be as loose as this. So if you have it like that, you're going to get nice whip, nice power. Now, all you need to then focus on is your contact point. Um, and that will come in time. So I mentioned in time, timing is so key for this. So again, we talk about timing in our backhand drive video. And again, go back and review that. There's a lot of very good information there. But when you're doing the loop, you have to get the same timing. It's no good being, you know, early, late, middle, late, middle, you know. It's got to be same. So you can get used to, so if you, if you get your timing perfect and you get your shot perfect, trust me, this is gonna be easy for you. So again, make sure that this, from here down to the racket is loose and all you then need to do is make sure this is what you're doing. So the racket will come from here, so there, that's what you're looking for, so. Very simple. So again, if I demonstrate it, you see that the arm comes up ever so slightly, and there it is. So let's talk about the contact point um, for the backhand loop. Now, I have an old uh, table tennis bat here, which um, I've drawn uh, four segments uh, on. And if I use the red for my uh, backhand, obviously, if I'm going to play, this segment will be pretty slow. This segment will be pretty slow. This segment will be pretty slow. And this will be moving the fastest because it's the trailing edge. So just like when we had the, the, the whip, obviously the fastest moving part of this is the tip right at the end. So if I want to um, have um, speed, I want to contact that ball, the fastest moving part, which is about here. 
Now, so if I make contact in this quadrant here, obviously I've not got much room for error, but this is where I contact the ball. Now, sometimes it may be here and that's okay. And this is okay. This is for me the best because this is the last thing to come through. So that, this point here is likely to be the fastest moving part of the racket. Okay, so that's where I believe it should be. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. So let's talk very briefly about use of the legs. So if we're close to the table, which is that's pretty close, then there's no real need for that much um, motion from the legs. Just have a tiny little bit of drop and raise. Now, when we get to medium distance, so if we're gonna now talk about sort of this kind of distance where I have to have an outstretched arm uh, to reach the table, um, then I'm gonna need a little bit more input, more thrust from the legs. Um, so that shot would be as such. So there, so you can see there's a little bit more thrust from the legs. Now again, if I go from mid distance to further back, and I don't have much room in this venue, but so here, so I really, I can't touch the table at all. So I would consider this to be quite far away from the table. Obviously internationals and very, very good players get very, very far away from the table. But from here and beyond, you need to have uh, more input from the legs. So here we're looking for down and spin, down and spin. So in this particular shot, your bat wouldn't necessarily come from your hip, it would come from between your legs down here and then you're looking to send that ball higher. As, as I discussed in that other video uh, on the whiteboard, when you're close to the table, you want a low trajectory, so you want to keep it at or about the height of the net. Mid distance, you need to send that up a little bit further, so maybe a foot, a foot and a half uh, above the net, and then far away. It can be anything really. You know, if you see an opening, you can play it fast and through, but typically you, you're looking to get back into a point, so you want to throw that ball higher. Um, this is not a fishing shot, which is a completely different shot, but this is an attacking top spin backhand to help you get back into the table. So that kind of covers the, the use of the legs, but essentially, if you're uh, reasonably close, you do want to have this down and up motion, as uh, I've explained before. So um, in terms of musical notation, I'll just stand to one side to illustrate this, but you want sort of ka, Cow, ka, cow, ka, cow, ka, cow. So you can see I'm fully down in the cat position and then the cow is where I make contact on my way up. So down, up, down, up, down, up. So when you get that timing um, into your game, you'll find it's very, very easy to uh, play. So it would be, you know, ka, cow. Ka, 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 ka. And there's the, the motion from the legs. You can imagine ka and then ka. So it's very easy for you to get into that rhythm. So if the ball is coming, you know, in a regular spot, it's really quite simple to just time that ball, get it nice and easy. So where is our starting position for the backhand topspin? So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to bring this elbow in here and have the racket on or around your, your left hip. So this would be your starting position. And then we'll work on moving the elbow forwards as we play the stroke. And then that's how it will begin. So we get this kind of motion here. So we're actually trying to throw the elbow forwards once the racket's got to here. So everything's tight, elbow forwards, and then through. 
Okay, so what about our finishing position then? So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to finish round about here. So we don't want to take the elbow out and bring it all the way over here. Obviously, the further away from the table that you are, your finished position can be further across. However, your recovery will be slower. So typically speaking, this shot is performed uh, mid, mid length or mid distance from the table to, to far away. Um, but what we're gonna try and focus on is getting that finishing position just about here, which is just to the right of our head here. So again, from here, we're looking for about here, okay? Okay, so we've considered our starting position and our finishing position in terms of where the racket starts and ends. Um, but let's just focus a little bit on mechanics. So as I was just trying to teach my uh, learned friend uh, who is behind the camera, you can't see, um, what we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to get both power and spin and consistency as well. So what we're looking to do is, uh, so our starting position is here. Now our elbow comes into the body here. So this, this brings the racket back over our hip. And then what we're looking to then do is make this motion first and then this motion. So what we'll end up with is a nice mechanical situation where we're doing this so it's a little bit like one of those French uh, weapons called a trebuchet, where it's, it, it's, it's using the stick motion and then the, the, it has like a, a string which is attached to usually uh, some type of boulder or something which is flung into the, um, the city, through the city walls. But essentially what we're looking for is, in, is elbow in here, racket come here, and then through to finishing position. So if I go side on, you should be able to see this slightly better. So again, so racket gets brought from ready position here back into position near the hip. Elbow is close to the body at this point. Now we then do this with the elbow. So now our elbow is in front of the wrist. And so it's all one motion like the, the uh, stick whip thing. So here, and then we're looking for that there. So in and then through in and then through, okay? Here's an example of what not to do. So the elbow doesn't come up here, it stays close and then goes out to the right and so does the racket. Please do not do this. So what I've got here is I've got um, an illustration which I'm gonna try and use to illustrate what I mean by ball flight. Now, when we're close to the table, as in this black spot here, the ball flight will be very different than if we're mid distance and again, if we're far away. So what we want to obviously do is impart as much speed and spin as we possibly can. Now, obviously when you're further away, the speed is less of an issue. So we're gonna need a higher arc of a shot to basically get it. And obviously when we're, when we're far away, we're looking to get the ball deep. So we don't want it near the net here. We want it as deep as we can get it. So how do we do that? We're gonna basically try and throw that ball up and the spin will bring it down to this point here. So that's what we're looking to do when we are far away from the table. Now the contact point will be a lot more vertical in order to achieve that. When we're mid distance, we need to bring that uh, arc down. So we're looking for here. 
so that would be there similar position where it's landing but essentially we're still looking for that spin to bring that ball down that's what a uh, it's called a parabolic trajectory it's not easy for me to say but yeah so we're looking to have that ball top spinning so it wants to come down faster so we're going to throw the ball up as high as we can and that ball is going to spin back down and come down hard right on that edge of the table ideally now if we're close by we want a more shallow trajectory and this is what we're kind of looking for again we're looking for deep on the table always deep on the table is better because that puts pressure on your opponent if they can come into the table and play uh, whatever st a strong shot then they're going to force you away from the table which is why you may well be in this situation you know in the first place so but if you can get your ball deep onto their side of the table it's much more difficult for them to power you off they have to take care they have to read the spin well and they have to control that ball so what we're looking for here is just an understanding of the when we're far away from the table, it's no good playing a ball which is low here because that is likely to, you know, catch the net or worse, you know, worst thing is it's going to come short. So even if it does, it's an easy block. You're still standing here. It's good night Vienna. So make sure that you have this idea of where that trajectory should be. So this is advanced strokes. So you're looking for high, medium, and low for close to the table. So close, low, medium, medium, high, far away, high, high, high. Okay, brilliant. So I wanted to do a very quick video on um, the angle of your torso, whether you know, you're leaning over the ball or whether you're leaning back or you know, wherever it is. Um, and this is in relation to uh, the ball flight. So when we're close, we describe that the ball would be uh, quite low over the net. So in that particular situation, you want your torso to be uh, more over the ball so in this position so I'd be here leaning over the ball um, when I'm mid distance I'm going to be slightly higher so I don't need to have my head down so much because if you're close to the table the ball's going to be kicking forwards at you very very fast um, with a lot of top spin so you need to be able to close the racket and go over the ball um, so, so uh, to illustrate the side on, so this would be close to the table, and then this would be a little bit more relaxed for a mid-length one, and then for far away you want to be able to take this ball down uh, the back between your legs here, or near your left knee rather, and it's much more of a vertical um, torso angle, and you can throw that ball high. So facing so it would be close to the table you want to be low mid length you want to be about here and then anywhere which is uh, far away you want to be here and then throw the ball up so it's much more of a, a vertical torso angle so with this shot as well let's talk about bat angles so when the ball is coming with a certain amount of topspin, or shall we say a large amount of topspin, you're going to want to close that racket. So same shot, but we're perhaps looking more for a, a closed racket such as this. So here, so if someone's spinning uh, violently against you, then you want to essentially make sure that that racket is over that ball. And this is where your timing will come um, into real importance. So when someone is, is really coming at you, 
you need to be able to time that ball better. So your timing will be obviously shorter for a quick ball that's coming to you. So it'll be catch out, catch out, catch out, catch out. When you're mid distance, you'll want to open the racket more. So you'd be about here. So rather than here, you want here. And we're looking to throw the ball up, as in the video that I, I explained uh, on the whiteboard. So we want to throw that ball further, further, higher over the net to carry that distance. And then finally, when we're further from the table here, we might want a more vertical um, bat angle. So again, we want to throw that ball up higher and higher and higher. So it'll come down fast and deep on the other side of the table. So just bear that in mind, depending on where your distance is, this shot does change but the mechanics of it stay more or less the same. Obviously, when you're close to the table, you'll need less legs. Mid distance, you're gonna need more legs. And then when you're far away from the table, you're gonna need a lot more legs. So just bear that in mind. Start off and practice you know, your close table work first, then move to mid distance, then move to uh, far distance and away. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of common errors um, with this stroke. So number one, which we did cover in the backhand drive video, is where the uh, racket comes from the middle as opposed to the hip. Now, if it comes from the middle here, we do have this large gap here. Now, this is not to say you can't get away with playing it like this, but it's um, you're looking for the perfect technique, I'm assuming. So. So if you, if you find, if you film yourself and you have this hole, um, which is visible here through this hole, then what will tend to happen or can happen is that the racket will come off over here or the elbow won't come forward. So you'll end up with, li with low power. You might get spin. And of course, if you still have this kind of motion as we talked about in the mechanics, then you can get it on from here, but it's much better, more compact if you bring it from the hip. So that's the first thing to look out for. The second common mistake with, with this shot is being too tense. So um, I get many people who ask me about this and you know I try and get them to relax. And it's the same thing for me on the forehand. I'm, I'm a little too tense on the forehand. And it's basically usually down to confidence. Um, so you've got to literally train this um, into your game or train the tenseness out of your game. So ways to fix this is to build yourself one of these and have it in your bag and whenever you, you, you're, you're struggling or whatever just get this and just try and imagine this nice fluid way of playing so it needs to be nice and relaxed so like I say get yourself one of these and practice that as much as you possibly can. Um, and number three, um, and a common error with this shot, is to not have any input from the legs. So I'll see a lot of people doing this all very well and good, but what they don't typically do is they don't uh, use the legs. So uh, as we described earlier, we want this ca cow situation. So ca cow ca cow ca cow. So as the ball is coming towards you, it's going to make the ca sound, so you should be down for that. And then on your way up, that's where you hit the ball. So if you can imagine the, this sort of musical idea of timing, so, you know, that'd be perfect for that. And then number four, um, it's, it comes down to being tense again, but it's to do with the, the grip. So if, you, if everything else is loose, and I fail to see how this would be possible, but if you grip the bat too tightly, what will happen is that your, your contact will be a little thick and you won't get that spin. So if everything's nice and fluid through and your grip, try, try to imagine that you're holding um, a, a baby bird or a, you know a, a small bird like a, a robin or um i don't know let's just say a robin i can't think of any other birds 
um, but essentially you're you're trying to grip hold of it so that it's just not flying away you're not trying to hurt the bird or anything like this so you want to have a nice loose grip and then make contact through so finally one of the last common mistakes that uh, we have with this stroke isn't necessarily about isn't it's not necessarily about the stroke it's actually about your recovery so um, a friend of mine pointed this out to me earlier which was where when you're playing your stroke you will um, potentially finish off here now the the real harm is if you keep your elbow out here for your forehand so if you play and finish your stroke here you need to get back to ready this is ready so I'll make a full video about the ready position because it is that important and I played a player on Sunday um, and he does the basics of table tennis so so well that um, even though he's not got some of the advanced strokes he was able to beat me by just having really really good basics so always always finish your stroke and get back to the ready position this is the ready position so don't finish and just watch and think wow that was a really good shot because they do come back um, you know and you should always expect the ball back so always back to ready so thanks for watching this video about the backhand topspin and um, I've tried to be as detailed as I possibly can be without overloading you hopefully um, if you've got any questions please leave uh, a comment so that I can try and address those kind of questions um, and I've covered everything that I think is necessary for just getting that backhand topspin from pretty much a static position. There is movement involved but I just felt that this video was already long enough and there's quite a lot of detail in there and um, so what I would suggest to you uh, is to basically watch it multiple times. I'll try and put in the chapters so that it's easy just to repeat that section so you can just go over and over and over it with it in your head um, and then you can take this onto the table and start beating all your friends so um, again if you have liked this video um, and you've got something out of it please do like and subscribe it helps the channel so much um, I can't believe how big we've actually grown in just one month it's amazing so thank you very much to all of our new subscribers and uh, those that have been here, uh, there from the beginning. So yeah, let's continue to grow. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, see you next time. Thank you, bye now.